You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is time for our final broadcast, at least for the on-demand portion of the network. Yes, it is time once again. For Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com, except no substitutes, as well as from the network upon which so many of you have been enjoying yourselves throughout the week. Hope you're having a good NVIDIA week. You know, we have Fed weeks. I guess now we have to have NVIDIA weeks. Got to add that to the mix, <laughs> according to you folks out there in the audience. NVIDIA bigger than the Fed right now. We'll get to all that fun in a little bit. Of course, if you like what you hear this show, anything else, we got cooking here on the network. Throw a like, a star, a comment. All of that mixed into the heady stew. That is the online algorithm. It does help new people continue to discover the content out there. And, of course, if you want to discover more fun, you don't want your broadcast week to end with volatility views. You want to come back for a whole mess of additional fun, including some crazy trades we got popping off out there. Only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. That'll get you options oddities immediately following this show. That would have gotten you... The pro Q&A that we did earlier this week, another fun one with our old buddy, the director of risk, talking about VIX upside and hedging and zero day and all kinds of stuff going on out there. Of course, you can still get that if you head on over to the pro right now. It's available on the pro podcast feed with just about 300 other awesome pro episodes for you, as well as live streams and giveaways and exclusives like that awesome panel I did with uh, the Flowmaster and Greg Manadini from Amber Data, as well as from JJ from TD Ameritrade. So not the TD, that's old school. JJ from IG now. <laughs> so all sorts of fun stuff there. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Kick the tires and light the fires, as they say. As we go around the horn, see who's joining us on the old Volatility Views program this week. First, let's go out once again to the Southern Volatility Mecca. I don't know, is it still the Mecca? If RMC is in the rearview mirror, is RMC coming back to Austin? I don't know. I guess we'll find out because we are joined by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the program. And uh, is RMC ever darkening your doorstep again? You know, I, I don't know, but I'm here. Thus, it is a Southern volatility mecca. There it is. A mecca of one. That's all you need at the end of the day to keep the vol ball rolling and keeping that vol ball rolling for us listeners we roll on out to our guest seat where we are joined once again by the once future and now present. Yes, he does indeed have the paper. Dr. Vix, a.k.a. Mr. Russell Rhodes, holding court over there at the Kelly School of Business. He's also our international man about town at all sorts of vol conferences around the globe. He gives us his insight into those. Occasionally, he writes a book or two about vol as well. Mr. Rhodes, welcome back to the program, sir. I am absolutely thrilled to be here as always. Happy Friday when I'm with you on 
Here it goes. Yeah, chew. I knew that was coming. I was trying so hard. You not saved to it in your ear. Sorry, Mark and Mark. <laughs> you saved it for the show. How nice of you. I said I was trying so hard to say something quick and mute myself. Oh, I'm not a professional. In, I'm a professional something, but definitely not a professional broadcaster. So <laughs> that is readily apparent, sir, as we keep on rolling. <laughs> Let's right go on ahead. into the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, let's get to it. Time for a little bit of volatility review, the portion of the show where we break down the week that was and indeed still is from a vol trading and trending and analysis and all sorts of fun perspectives. And, you know, coming into the start of the show, uh, we are all just recovering, recovering from the whirlwind that has been NVIDIA week. How was your NVIDIA week? Was it good? We're getting into that crazy cakes town. We were talking earlier this week on Options Boot Camp about skew levels across the board if we are reaching kind of that meme stock level and the single stock single name skew level the short answer is kind of yeah we are kind of getting there again <laughs> and of course wondering if this nvidia earnings would be the canary in the coal mine once we reach peak skew again does that mean we're kind of headed for the downturn well sure enough at least in the nvidia perspective the answer was no coming in hot taking the whole market along for the ride with it and now coming into the start of the day today, uh, the market's kind of kind of settling a little bit, relaxing a little more now. It's still up, but only up slightly. Uh, S&P up about two-tenths of a percent after flirting with some downside and then coming back up. Kind of so trying to just recover from just the massive euphoria that was the post-NVIDIA blowout. The Dow up about a quarter of a percent now. The Dow trying to be the cool kid now add an amazon to the fold does that make you more intrigued by the dow i'm curious i guess it can't really make you less intrigued <laughs> not many people writing into us about the dow these days but i don't know maybe maybe adding amazon to the mix will make it sexier i don't know and then nasdaq kind of unched out there right now all that a long way around to saying uh, vix in fact a few minutes ago was literally unched on the week in fact that's kind of a theme we have throughout most of our products we're going to talk about on the show today we can have the theme today being unched which might surprise a lot of you, given what we had going on this week. But yeah, almost literally unched. In fact, when we were crunching the numbers right before showtime, just about every product we talked about on the show was almost literally unched on the week. It's just crazy. Uh, VIX just moved a little bit, so now it's at about a 14 when we kicked off the show. It was unched. Now it's up about two-tenths of a point out there. So yeah, just a crazy town. Uh, VVIX at an 80 when we kicked off the show. Guess what? Unchanged. <laughs> on the week so yeah kind of a bit of a theme a whole bunch of sturm and drong signifying nothing at the end of the day let's go around the horn let's start with our guest mr road sir obviously this is nvidia's market we're all just living in it what were your thoughts on the mad mad announcement this week and the vol response we saw sir well here's the funny thing about um uh, earnings this past week and I, i'm you know, I'm still recovering from that brain injury and everything. There was a technology company that blew up like Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and forgotten which one it was, but it's it's more of a networking. Was it Palo Alto? Um, and and oh, the I one, do have the a one, point behind this. The one that imploded? Uh, yeah, Palo yeah. Alto Networks imploded, yeah. Okay, Palo Alto. Um, I, I did some digging on uh, what that might be telling us, and, and I think there's a really cool equivalent. I mean, NVIDIA is great for you know the big four horsemen and the type of stocks that have been outperforming forever uh, you know, in, the, in the tech space. But Palo Alto Networks, which did not have a good earnings announcement this week, uh, they have 4,500 corporate clients around the world. And I think that is a better indication of the true economy than what happened with NVIDIA, you know, with the, the rally out of NVIDIA. In fact, somebody, one of my students down in down at IU said, you know, that if this Palo Alto is blowing up, should, should we be taking a look at shorting NVIDIA? And I said, beyond both being listed on the NASDAQ, they don't have a whole lot in common. And um, so, you know, it, it, I think we're continuing to see a divergence 
between like the new tech economy or at least everybody being attracted to those types of stocks and uh, the regular old what impacts all of us economy not really doing so hot. And I would equate what happened with Palo Alto. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people don't remember this one, but I do because I was long the stock. Uh, the first canary in the coal mine that we got before the internet blow up was Cisco because they supply, you know, they supply to tons and tons of, um, they had the same sort of customer base that Palo Alto has. So we may, we may look back and that's an early signal that uh, the stock market has some rough days in front of it this year. Ah, yes. So the good old days of the end of the dot-com bubble. I was out there in Intel when they pre-announced bad earnings. Oh my goodness. And that yeah. was, that was for many people, the real kind of boom coming off the road. They were one of the two real engines of that boom. It's kind of like and NVIDIA I, doing that now, right? I would throw, yeah, and I would throw EMC in there with Intel and because EMC had the great drive technology where when you put your code into the ATM, it instantly can find your information and let you know that, uh, or make sure that unless somebody's holding a gun to your head that you're the right person getting the money out of the uh, ATM. So those three companies about six months before the internet thing really came, you know, came crashing down. And that's because all of their customers were, you know, didn't need to buy any more stuff or couldn't buy any more stuff. Not to make this too much memory lane, but really quickly, because yeah. it is relevant to what you're saying. Uh, that yeah. was such a big deal at the time Intel pre-announced. I remember it was kind of a quiet day on the floor. So we went down there. We mm -hmm. knew we were going to be in a fast market in that crowd. All the other guys who didn't have much to do on the floor came and just gathered around the pit to watch. I've never seen anything like it. There were 10 deep past the pit just to watch what was going on in there because it was such a freaking crazy show going on it's out there. That's how nuts it was at the time. So, yeah, that would... That would have been, I guess, uh, yeah, today analogous to NVIDIA coming out a month, a couple of weeks, I forgot how long it was, ahead of their earnings and saying, by the way, not only are we not going to hit our earnings, it's going to be terrible and just uh, crushing, annihilating everything. So, yeah, uh, interesting, interesting. Perhaps uh, the past is prologue or perhaps not. NVIDIA just continuing to blow the doors off everything. So <laughs> I guess we can continue to debate it until, until NVIDIA, the bloom, comes off the rose. Mr. Meatball... Again, kind of NVIDIA's week. We're all just living in it, sir. What caught your eye out there from a vol perspective this week? Yeah, you know, what was interesting uh, yesterday, more so than today, um, S&P strike fall was up, not down. Um, you know, we saw the VIX mm. down a little bit, but it was like entirely, and, and Dr. VIX can kind of explain this probably better than I can, but they're, you know, mechanically, all other things being equal, if the S and P goes up, VIX is going to go down, and if the S and P drops, VIX is going to go up as a function of skew. So, when I went and looked at like the March regular, uh, you know, fifty one hundred and fifty one quarter calls, um, the vol was up, and downside was up as well. Today, it's it's come off a little bit, but uh, you know, it was a function of. You know, one, I think we're kind of climbing a little bit of a wall of worry here. And two, we had moved so hard that it's hard for volatility to come in. But I think it was an, an indicative of some call chasing. So traders, you know, chasing after calls to get long and then probably some stock replacement where traders are, mm -hmm. you know, selling their underlying and buying upsides, uh, upside calls to uh, continue to have that upside leverage. But maybe not have the downside that they had. Uh, I, th I thought that was kind of the most t interesting piece of non-NVIDIA trading that took place yesterday. Yeah, that has been a fascinating, some might say frustrating thing to watch as, as someone who's had a few pairs of uh, VIX puts slip through my hands as a result of this firmness. <laughs> I, I, can, I can attest to some of that frustration. I'm working some right now. We'll see how it all goes out. But I'll reveal it uh, later today on the old options oddities. Uh, speaking of things to reveal, Mr. Mr. Once in Future Dr. VIX, we had a question uh, from... Uh, the meatballs compatriot, Mr. Rock Lobster, he wanted me to put to you. Uh, he wanted to know something he's been complaining about. I think a lot of people out there in the vol community have also been taken aback a little bit about this, this VIX and SPX moving in lockstep out there. And Andrew wanted to know, is this the longest stretch of VIX up, SPX up ever? He said, it certainly feels like that. So... I don't. You missed. You're a keeper of our historical data, sir. I, I know, and I I saw that one just a few minutes ago, and haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Uh, but do recall, and and you 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 call me the world traveler and everything. I'm going to be doing 
Uh, you and also you brought up Sebo's RMC. It's uh, it's in Colorado this next year. It's at Snowbird. Oh. Uh, apparently, someone that gets to make the decisions really likes to go to Snowbird. Apparently, we have a it's Western the volatility mecca. The Southern volatility mecca is out. And out west, middle of um, October 15th through 18th. I'm going to uh, your ex's version of this uh, next Thursday and Friday. And I did a pre-call. I, I've been doing pre-calls for the panels that I'm going to, that I'm hosting. Uh, one of them, I had a global derivative strategist, uh, and it was this morning. And they pointed out that the VIX S&P 500 behavior is very similar to 2018, uh, he's not as worried as he was in 2018 because there's not as much structural money short VIX or VIX, you know, VIX instruments, period, uh, like there was back when we got the Balmageddon incident. He said, but we are feeling kind of fragile and you may want to worry, you know, may work, may want to worry a bit about things turning on a dime. Yeah, the so I don't know if this is the longest stretch. I'm going to work on it, have a little <laughs> note to work on it. I'll probably put it in my uh blog uh, this weekend, uh, but also what I'm doing, because, you know, I'm always quanting on the fly. Uh, I'm modeling out or I'm modeling out the uh, term structure for the S&P 500 NASDAQ and Russell uh, just to see what may be driving VIX this week. And I will be back with that in about a minute and a half. Yeah, the Eurex event. I've been hearing a little more about that this week. Not one we usually get a mm -hmm. chance to talk about, but I, I am color me intrigued, sir. I think that it's they, huge. Yeah, they're telling me they about got, it. They have 12 to 1500 people. Um, I, I've seen, I've never gone before, but, um, I'll be in the main room for two things and they told me to expect about 1200 people. Yeah, that's a, that's a bonkers. That's I mean, a we, big FN conference. We've always known, uh, there's a huge bastion of interest in Vol in France. That used to be our joke on oh, the yeah. SPX. Whenever, whenever the phone rang, there was at least a 30, 40 Delta. There was a French accent on the other side of the phone. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there, uh, clearly Europe stepping up. To the vol plate, yeah. going to talk V stocks, a whole bunch of other stuff. So that'll be next week, right? So we'll get your report, Correct. I guess, in a couple of Correct. weeks uh, from the once in future to our international vol man here on the scene. So that'll be kind of fascinating. We don't get a chance to talk V stocks on the show too often. Maybe, maybe we'll have a chance to change that down the road a little bit. We'll see. By the way, checking in the chat. I have to tip my have to tip my hat. I'm having a hard time today. I have to tip my hat to uh, the queen in the chat. She's learned. She's learned from me and others over the years. Take victory early. She is claiming victory already in our crystal ball challenge. So I tip my cap to you. Obviously, the show isn't over. No official victor. But you know what? You get points for trying out there. As we keep on rolling out there, let's see how hard the VIX futures are trying this week. Obviously, we had Feb rolling off the board this week. So add in... A little bit of interest to the vol goings on this week. Did that drive some paper this week? I guess we'll find out in a little bit. Looking at the vol surface right now, I was saying that kind of our theme for the week is, is unched. <laughs> Sturm and Drong signifying nothing at the end of the day. Uh, that's kind of what we got going on here on the vol surface as well. Obviously, Feb off the board. Uh, March coming into the start of the show was down about two tenths of a point. And that March future at about 1460 and the April future down about 0.15. So not getting a huge amount of evolution. That said, that little kink we've been talking about for a while is still right where you would expect it, which is right around the October future. That gets north of a 20 or at about a 2030 or so out there on the OC future. So you got a nice little roughly six points between March and October. So that's a healthy contango you could certainly sink your teeth into out there. Uh, we could argue whether that's overdone or underdone, and we have in the past, and I'm sure as we get closer to October, we will probably have that conversation again. Do you think a 20 handle in October is merited? I don't know. We could have a, a crazy cycle this time, and a 20 could be dramatically underselling things. I suppose we'll find out. Mr. Meatball, sir, uh, what's catching your eye out there in the vol surface this week with Feb rolling off the board? Yeah, you know, um, Despite all the news being out and everything, we still that front month future is still really tight relative to the cash index. Uh, it keeps telling us, hey, something, you know, VIX is going to tank or something else is going to happen. Um, but the the flatness of the curve and the the tightness of the curve relative to the index uh, continues to to flummox me. It is quite the flummoxing curve, sir. <laughs> Mr. Rock, Mr. Rocklops, I apologize. Mr. Once That's future, okay. I've, I've been mistaken for worse things. That's people. true. You have. I have heard you've been mistaken for worse things. So, yes, that is true. Uh -huh. But uh, Mr. Mr. Once in Future, Dr. Vix, sir. That's a problem. Your handle is so long. It takes a while to say. 
But Mr. Once in Future, Dr. Vix, what's catching your eye out there? Are you too flummoxed by the Vix curve? Well, first off, why don't we call me current Dr. Vix? It'll make it easier for you. I've graduated to current. That is true, but that's not quite as fun, or is it as it's alliterative? It's not as fun or interesting, but uh, so um, okay. To the uh, you, I, I swear I'm not being a shill for your ex because because you know they're they're uh, being nice to me these days. But um, their October contract just came out last week. They launch they they roll out the longer dated ones a little bit uh, later than um, they they tend to do it the same week that one expires. So. Uh, we sometimes we don't have as far out of a term structure with V stocks as we do with VIX. Uh, v stocks looks exactly the same with the October kink, so it's not just here. Uh, and what I, I honestly what I was kind of hoping for was that uh, the oct that the V stocks looked you know kind of tame and October VIX was uh, looks like a I, I think it looks like a kickstand like an upside down kickstand right now. Uh, but I was I was all fired up for the the October V stocks to be available and buy October V stocks and short October VIX. But I guess a lot of other people had the same idea. Yes. Good old V stocks. Yeah. That's a, that's one we talked about a, a few times in the past. Usually it's around these inauspicious milestones. Yeah. Coming up on two year anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine listeners. That's usually when people tend to come knocking on our door and ask us about international vol, usually with a bit of European flavor, in which case, uh, v stocks fits the bill, so yeah, intriguing stuff. I will be curious to see what you what you pick up out there in that conference. I have never been there. Maybe who knows? Maybe I'll maybe I'll check it out in future sessions, sir. Now let's go out to the land of all things VIX listeners. Is it a banger day? Was it a banger week out here? Given the fact that it was the newest market holiday, Nvidia week, listeners. Did you have a fun party? How did you celebrate? NVIDIA week out there. <laughs> I bought a whole bunch of downside and vol and sprinkled a little bit of upside in there as well. Uh, so let's get to some of the fun out here today. Is it today a banger day? The answer is not really. 323,000 contracts. Uh, the ADV also kind of reflecting that as well. 734 right now. Actually down 32,000 contracts on the week. So again, maybe NVIDIA week, not really the new Fed week in terms of not delivering on the volatility volume front. Let's break down the top 10. We got all excited. We got all giddy that there were actually two puts in the top 10. Well, alas, those are gone now. Now we're down to one. We still have one, though. So those of you out there clinging to the number of puts in the top 10, I know you're there. I hear from you. You now have only one to sink your teeth into. Don't worry. Don't have to wait too long until we get there. Uh, number 10, cost you 182,000 contracts to break into the top 10. That gets you to the, our favorites, the April 60s. That's pretty light. Again, we saw some OI roll off the board this week. So that's usually when that break into the top 10 number gets around these levels on uh, number nine 187,000 of the march 19s number eight 200k exactly of our old favorite back to my favorite strike the 47 halves this time in august as uh, number seven here we go 213,000 of the first and only put in our top 10 the march 14 puts interesting I may have an axe to grind on that strike as well. Number six, 215,000 of the March 47 halves. Right back at it. Right back to the nonsense one by fives. Uh, number five, 220,000 of the May 60s. So, yeah, if you don't like the 47 halves, allow me to present the April and May 60s. You like those better, listeners? Number four, right back at it, 227,000 of the May 47 halves. Number three, 250 of the March 17s. Compared to all the rest of this, shall I say nonsense, March 17 <laughs> seems pretty normal. Uh, 250 of those. Number two, 258,000 of the April 20s. And rounding out the top 10 this week, listeners, 357,000 of the March 20s. Remember our old friends, the Feb 17s, went the way of the dodo last week. Quite the saga on those. Check out last week's episode if you did indeed miss it. Uh, before I go around the horn, we did have a truncated holiday week. Let's go out to uh, Mr. Meatball first, sir. Anything catching your eye out there in the land of VIX options this week? Yeah, you know, it wasn't an, an exceptionally busy week for uh, the options on uh, on VIX, to, VIX this week, despite all the, the kind of the razzmatazz around NVIDIA. Uh, today, kind of especially slow. A lot of puts trading. Um and one second here L looking to see if there were any, any kind of trades that really popped. Um, 
pretty active week for puts. We did have some action on the May 18s, um, 18 calls, but you know, I'm looking at the kind of the biggest trades March 29 calls were bought yesterday. That was pretty big. Um, but, uh, it looked like about 60,000 of those, uh, not, not a ton happening, uh, this week, Mark. Uh, it, it was, this was a slow, a relatively slow week for, uh, for the index. Yeah, not exactly a banger. Let's break some of it down. Monday, just an explosive, crazy, the most insane day of the week, of course, because we were closed. So insert whatever paper you like there, listeners. Tuesday, 546,000 contracts on the tape. So not exactly explosive there either. The big dog on Tuesday, our old friend, the March 17s, 29,900 of those bad boys taking the top spot, followed by number two, 27,000 of the March 14 half puts. Which way would you rather go on that, listeners, if you had to buy one leg? You're buying the March 17s or you're buying the 14 half puts, all expiring at the same time? I don't have the prices here, but I'm just kind of curious. Which way are you leaning out there? Number three, 25,000 of the March 18s. Oh, here we go. Number four, 25,000 as well of the March 25. So maybe a bit of vertical action there. And then number five, 23,000 of the March 14 puts. Fast forward to Wednesday, getting into. The big hot business out there, listeners, and not a lot of paper to be seen again. 458,000. So, so far, NVIDIA slash Fed Week not delivering the volume out here. Uh, the big dog on Wednesday, 43,000 of the April 15 puts. That's an interesting one. Followed by number two, 42,000 of the March 13 puts. So, are they rolling? Are they rolling that bad boy? I have to go look and see. Number three, 37,000 of the May 18. So, back to the upside. Number four, 27,000 of the may 15 put so a lot of 15 put action this week that's kind of interesting and that was also a pretty uh, good juicy strike at the time and now obviously looking even juicier and number five 19 000, almost 20 000 of the march 15 put so 15 put love across the board thursday the big bonkers day listeners and not really delivering the paper either Six hundred forty-eight thousand contracts that's it on a fed day we can easily expect 1 million maybe 1.2 maybe even more paper but uh NVIDIA day, 648. It's all we can muster. 65,000 was the big dog. That gets us to the March 29s. Oh, off to the races on those bad boys. That was kind of reminiscent to me of the, <laughs> not quite as bad, but the 56,000, was it, of the NVIDIA 1300s that went up on Thursday that expired today? Yeah, good times. Uh, number two, 41,000 of the May 50s. So here we go. Right back at it, listeners. Number three, 35,000 of the March 14 puts. Number four, 21,000 of the March 16s. And rounding out the top five on Thursday, 21,000 as well of the April 20s. Interesting. And then today, like we said, kind of anemic. Only 323,000 contracts on the tape. The big dog, such as it is, 31,000. Again, our old friend, the March 17s. Those seem to be... The strike du jour, perhaps the strike of the week out there. Number two, 27,000 of the March 13 puts. Now you're getting out there. Number three, 20,000 of the March 12 puts. Ooh, the 12 puts. Interesting. Number four, about 15,000 of the March 14 puts. And rounding out the top five, it's a put palooza, the rest of it, listeners. 12,000, almost 13,000 of uh, the weekly 14 puts expiring on the 27th. So we got a whole put palooza outside of the 17s taking the top spot. Mr. Once in Future, Dr. Vix, not maybe delivering on the volume front the way some people might have expected for the new quote unquote Fed week. Anything catching your eye out there on the Vix options front this week? That 14 strike. You you remember back in the day when we, we would get set in front of the TV to watch Sesame Street and the end, they would tell us that the show was brought to us by a letter and a number. Today's show was brought to you by the number 14, that 14 put strike when you get to play my circus music in a, in a minute is going to come up an awful lot. Well, since you mentioned your fantastic circus music, <laughs> let's just get to it now. It is time, listeners, for Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. And don't ask, save your email. Yes, going to play it twice. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. <laughs> Always annoys my editors when I do that. But you know what? You got to give the people what they want, Mr. Russell. That's right. That's freaking awesome. So, yeah, the 14. And, and I, I do the weekly thing without before I see the show notes. 
So I didn't know that the 14 puts were the only put line that was one of the top 10, but I'm not surprised. If you said one put made it and you asked me to guess the strike from what I had seen in the weekly space, I would have guessed the 14s. So as you said, there was no trading on Monday, uh, Tuesday. Uh, with VIX at 1527, uh, somebody came in and put on a bear call spread. They, using the March 13th options, uh, sold 115 of the March 13th, 13 calls for 247 and bought 150 of the March 13th, 17 calls for 87 cents, uh, taken in a credit of a buck 60 and rooting for uh, VIX in the tweens in uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, also on Tuesday, and here comes the 14 puts, uh, with VIX at 1528, uh, somebody picked up some kind of cheap puts. Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, they sold some of these puts. Go figure. Uh, sold 100 of the March 6th, 14 puts at 25 cents. Uh, fast forwarding to Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, uh, somebody came in with VIX at 1599. Uh, somebody came in and sold in two lots, 650 of the March 6th. 14 puts at 22 cents each. Uh, Thursday, don't have anything on the 14 puts. But um, on Thursday, uh, somebody bought uh, the, I don't have the number. I think it's 100 or 200 of the March 27th, 40 calls for 15 cents each with VIX at 14.29 uh, as VIX was experiencing the NVIDIA volatility crush. And also somebody came in and sold uh, the March 6th, 19 calls for 21 cents each with VIX at 14.49. And then finally today, uh, somebody put on a bull call spread 800 times, bought 800 of the March 6th, 14 calls for a buck 10, and sold the same number of the March 6th, 17 calls for 33 cents. Net cost of 77 cents, we get a volatility event and we're above 17 at expiration, uh, looking at a profit of 223. And then, and this one, uh, this, this is an interesting one. Uh, today with VIX, and th this is the kind of trade that makes it to the big boy list. Uh, with uh, VIX at 14.51, somebody bought 12,000 of the February 27th, 14 puts for 13 cents each. Um, that's opening for sure because the open interest was only twenty two hundred going into the day. That did make it on our big boy list. I did mention that. Oh, it did one. make yes. it. On the, I yes. thought I thought I heard it, heard it, but I was uh, doing my quant work, which is going up on Twitter now. Yeah, you don't see that much size in the weeklies that often. That certainly does no. uh, raise an eyebrow. And opening, you like that one? You all over that one, Mister Mister Once and Future Doctor Vicks? Oh, I do. I I, I really do. Um, even though I'm, I don't have any short volatility positions on for the first time in like a year. Uh, I think that's a pretty good, you know, if, if, you know, if I don't think there's a whole lot on the docket early next week. So it's very possible that we could start, you know, uh, trending downward and, and, you know, at 13 cents, it's, although it's 12,000 times, but at 13 cents, uh, you're not talking about a whole lot of risk to try and catch some downside index. No, you are not. Yeah, you're not getting a lot of time, but uh, you're also not shelling out a ton out there, which is always nice. Let's keep on rolling into some other products that are catching our eye out there this week, listeners. I know the meatball, and I know Mr. Dr. Bix here, both big diehard supporters of all things SVIX. Well, maybe that's about to change. Maybe the, the bloom has come off the rose for one of them. Which one? I guess we'll find out in a second, listeners. Uh, this is another one. It should be statistically impossible. Well, not impossible. Highly improbable for literally everything we talk about on the show to be literally exactly unched when we kick off the show on the week. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but this was the week for that, listeners. Now, as the show is, is going on, they're starting to move a little bit. Uh, SFIX was another one that was literally unched. When we kicked off the show, now it's up about a third of a point, 39.90 out there. So, again, not doing a heck of a lot. But as VIX is starting to come back in, it is starting to tick back up again. That speaks to what we were just talking about earlier with the meatball, this maybe surprising, maybe frustrating stubbornness for VIX out there. Doesn't want to go down too much right now. And that is, of course, limiting the upside for SVIX right now. It's also limiting the volume. Not seeing a ton of paper out there. The ADV is 3,700. It's up about 100. It's kind of treading water. And today, we're only seeing about 2,300 contracts going up. Uh, the big dog open right now, such as it is out there in SVIX. And 
This would have seemed ridiculous not too long ago, but here we are. The March 45s. There's 5,500 of those bad boys out there. You like those, listeners? March 45s. Let's do it. Let's do a quick little look, listeners. Let's just see when they open those bad boys. Those are our fairly recent addition, I believe. Yes. Those started opening. Actually started opening about a week ago. They picked up a thousand of them for the truck. They closed around 30 cents back when we were at 3710. And then uh, coming into the 20th, a thousand more trading when uh, Ubix was or Ubix SVIX was around 37.88 for 20 cents, and they picked up more. It looks like obviously when they were higher yesterday for 16 cents. So they've been averaging down, but so who knows? Maybe this last kind will average them down to a level where you like those listeners. I don't know. 16 cents, March 45s. Let's go out to the meatball first. I know how Doctor Bix is feeling. Mister Meatball, are you a big fan of these March 45s? Uh, for 16 cents, the last kind. And then Wells is catching your eye. Are you still playing in SVIX or have you washed your hands, sir? Uh, you know, I am still playing in SVIX. Uh, it's a, it's a, I'm we currently have on a, a collar um, around long, long the stock. You know, I, I think it's going to have a, a, I mean, unless ball really collapses, it's going to have a tough time getting there uh, mathematically. Um, so I, I don't know that I love the trade. I got to be honest. Yeah, that's that's quite the Herculean leg for SVIX to put on at this point. <laughs> but they, given that the college try, they keep averaging lower. If you liked them at 30, you got to love them at 16, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this one. And speaking of loving things or perhaps falling out of love, Mr. Dr. Vix, are the rumors true? Has your lifelong love affair, at least as long <laughs> as it's been around with SVIX, has it finally come to a closer? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I, I, you know what? We're Ross and Rachel. We're on a break. I'm not Ooh. done with it. You like that? You like? I'm all about the references today, aren't I? Um, you are. The kids so, love yeah, the Friends I just, references. Yesterday, I, I first first off because I'm traveling, uh, I like to take a lot of positions down when I when I'm not going to be when my eyes going to be off the ball for a week. So that was part of it. Um, but I, I do think that we're over, overdue for a better chance to, for a chance to, uh, buy SVIX at a lower level. Um, we get somewhat of a, you know, get somewhat of a volatility event and SVIX comes under a pressure two or three points. I'll probably start to work my way back in, but, um, I just, yeah, it, it also seems to be hovering around in that upper 30 area and just doesn't seem to want to make another move to the upside. For the and moment. did you get but, called away? How did you get out of it? Did you just sell it? I just sold it. I started to sell calls. Um, that I started to sell some calls for today to get out of it, and then I was like, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm leaving for Europe tomorrow, and if it doesn't get called away, yeah, I, that that just means that it's going down on me. So I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to exit it. If I were not if I weren't traveling and stuff, I probably would have sold some calls instead. That looks like a man who just wants to get the heck out of Dodge. You know, hard to argue right. with that one. Hard to argue with that one. It is very difficult for me, as we were just saying, to kind of come up with the case that drives XVIX, SVIX, easy for me to say, SVIX markedly higher from where it is right now. I mean, certainly things could happen, but at a certain point, you know, you get to that limbo question with VIX, right? How low can you go? <laughs> and uh, we, we're not quite there yet, listeners, but we're starting to flirt with being close to that territory, in which case you do kind of see an upper bound to what SVIX can do, at least in the near time. Let's go out to a product that we're all rooting for a little bit more downside for, especially me, especially before the end of the bell, end of the session today. This is everybody's favorite, Uvix. I had about a 10 and a half right now. Uh, that's down. It was, again, literally unched when we kicked off the show. Again, that's How hard is that to pin the bullseye on Uvix of all? This thing moves around like crazy, but this is another one. Exactly unched when we kicked off the show. Now it's down to 10 and a half, down about a third of a point. Uh, seeing some paper out there today, about 13,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the ADV is 15,000. That's ticked up about 1,000 since our last show. So starting starting to put up some numbers out there. Uh, the big dog out there is still the same. It's still that roughly 20,000 lot of the April 12s. They bought these back for 270 back on, I think they, yeah, this was January 26th. So these have been around for about a month now. And... Uh, not looking great. They had they had their moment in the sun back when we saw a little bit of juice 
last week, these things popped to about 374. So they had made about a buck on these bad boys. And now uh, they were coming into today's show. They were trading a little bit shy of a buck 90, about a buck 88. Obviously, that's probably come in since then. So they're not looking great on these. Obviously, if you're going to put these on, they're probably size short a ton of vol somewhere else. <laughs> they're just covering their you know what's here. So they're probably not too sad, I should say, that this trade is not paying off. But still, when you have a hedge, quote unquote, like this, and you do make some money on it, it does seem a shame to not monetize at least some of it. Mr. Rhodes, have you noticed this massive position in UVIX to the upside? We don't see a lot of those. And B, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, kind of eroding and not really taking any off yet. Um, I, You know, I... For long exposure over over more than a, I think UVIX is great. If you know, if if and and my running joke used to be, uh, if uh, you know, if I had a guy at the Kremlin and they told me that Putin was going to start invading neighbors over the weekend. Uh, I mean, I actually ten years ago I was always saying that that's not funny anymore. Uh, but if you knew something like that was going to happen, uh, some sort of UVIX exposure, it. it it's definitely going to benefit you. You buy it. If the event happens and you make money, great. If not, you you kind of bail out of it. So it, I, I, I have some concern when, um, you know, with a longer term position, it, you know, even if it's not deteriorating uh, quite yet. But I just have I, I, I have a little concern around that one because uh, you could be right when you put it on and three weeks later, you. Uh, you what whatever you think is going to happen could happen and UVIX can go up and you're not going to profit from it because it's gone down so much in the process just due to the structural issues around it yeah that's that's another reason why you have to monetize this tr this hedge when you can yeah. right this this is one you can't sit on you're right this is no I, when i saw this one going up is i could see the argument maybe for some vix upside you have a little bit more time to work out there but you vix man you, you don't have much time to work at all mr meatball same question for you sir what are your thoughts anything going on in your world in uvix and what are your thoughts of this big block of April 12s that are slowly dying, sir? Maybe not that slowly anymore. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, they're not going to end up making money on those. <laughs> that would be my best bet. <laughs> That's what you tune into Vol Views for, listeners. The deep, deep analysis you've come to know and love <laughs> on volatility views. They will not make money on those 12s i said that the minute they bought them uh yeah that's uh that's a rough one out there who knows listeners maybe we'll get that crazy vol spike and then maybe they will take some off they probably won't be that happy because their core position will be getting annihilated but at least their hedge will have done its job in a ideal scenario right we get the vol spike they are able to monetize the hedge and then it comes right back down the other way and they're able to monetize also their actual position uh so far not seeing that happen out there. Let's go out to our buddy, Mr. Vixologist. Let's see if the meatball wants to throw him under the bus again this week. Uh, his favorite product. He denies that he is the captain of the defense force for this, but he is clearly the standard bearer for all things UVXY. Another one literally unched when we kicked off every single product. I don't think I've ever seen that before in the history of this show. Usually one is doing something. This week, literally unched on everything. Even some of these insane ones like UVX. <laughs> Uh, UVXY was seven and a quarter when we kicked off the show, literally unched down to seven ten when we kicked off. Right now, I should say down about 0.15. So not doing a heck of a lot. A decent paper on the tape, 74,000. The ADV is 107,000 right now. It's up about 4,000 out there right now. In terms of the most active contract today, it's the seven halves, 7,600 of those going up. These are expiring today. Looks like they might be closing. So some folks getting the heck out of Dodge on those, which seems why he's given the fact that we're at about a 710 right now doesn't seem like the seven halves are going to do it for you also march seven halves going up 7300 times seems like those might be closing as well those are march expiring on the first so those are still in the weeklies in terms of the size position that is open right now top in the list in uvxy there's about twenty five thousand of the eight halves expiring today so spoiler alert i don't think those are going to come to fruition now you had a chance Earlier this week, well, let's look really quickly, listeners. Let's just look really quickly to see how high did UVXY get this week. We got up to about eight bucks, it looks like, going into Tuesday night. So not quite there. That was probably your best shot, but that was all you had, really, to take those off if you're along them. And then uh, no joy. Mr. Dr. Bixer, anything catching your eye in UVXY land, or as the cool kids say, Uvixie? Uh-oh, the head trauma is sneaking in again. Mr. Dr. Vix, are you there, sir? 
Oh, I saw. I I thought you were asking Mark. I, I apologize. I thought. I honestly thought. Yeah. I I just somewhere for some reason you said uh, Doctor Vix, and I heard Greasy Meatball. Goodness gracious, who knows? <laughs> um, no, there's not. I mean, I I'm I'm much more of a Uvix fan than a Uvixie fan, uh, just because of the 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 dampening impact on Uvixie. Um, so I, it's that's just something I don't pay a ton of attention to. There, that, that's another great piece of insight for you, huh? <laughs> I think we're all in that same boat. Mark, you're in that same boat. I don't think any of us prefer UVXY yet. For some reason, yeah. a lot of people do. And the numbers back it up. They're, have it. The, the, yeah, mm -hmm. there is some of that. This is an ongoing debate that I have. Is it better to have more liquidity for an inferior product or less liquidity, maybe a little bit more slippage for a better product that does the thing better? I lean towards the better product, even if it might be a little bit more difficult to get in and out sometimes. Yeah, uh, but, I do too. But I think I think we all I, lean well, that way. I, I'm I'm going to work against you on that one. <laughs> um, just just the whole getting out part and monetizing part. Um, you know, I want as much liquidity as freaking possible with that. Oh, you always well, want. You know, more. you yeah. can. It's not hard to actually get in on Uvix and then monetize it. it well, I, I'd be getting into the weeds, but you could theoretically get in on Uvix and then monetize out on UVXY if yeah. you do yeah. the math. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that's an excellent excellent point. But yeah, that's uh no, that, I don't know why there, I just there are a few of that markets now. I've been doing work on like that for people, and uh, it just seems like it when it comes down to it. Um, it, especially in the volatility space. And, and this is a saying that goes across all markets that, um, you know, we don't care about day-to-day -day liquidity. We care about liquidity when we really need it. And that tends to be around a volatility event. Um, you know, I don't know if they all become equally Ill illiquid if they start ripping around all over the place or not. But um, just because of the, the nature of the way that you should handle long volatility positions and be very prepared to monetize them. And, uh, you know, let's just admit it. The market makers know uh, where the monetization may be coming from. Uh, you just, you know, that's that's one of the reasons I would like a lot more people in the market if I'm going to have to deal with something like that. More liquidity is always better at the end of the day, but I still do err on the side of the, the better product, even if it is a little bit more laborious to get in and out sometimes. VXX, uh, again, literally unched when we kicked off the show. I, I mean, this is just insanity. And now it's at about a 14 even. That puts it down about two-tenths of a point from this time last week. Uh, the ADV, 67,000, up about 1,000. Not a lot going on out there today, about 40,000 contracts. Uh, the big dog in VXX right now, 26,000 of the March... 14 puts nothing really blowing my skirt up out there in vxx i think really quickly uh let's roll out to a little bit of the old volatility voicemail it's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders it's time to check the volatility voicemail make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4vol Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody, let's get to it. A lot of fun conversations going on in our in our chat room. One of them kind of caught my eye, which is an interesting one. People discussing whether they're going to still be trading and keeping an eye on the markets after they retire, which I would say hopefully you will. I and mean, hopefully that's especially when you're retired, you got a lot of time on your hands, right? But hopefully these are knowledge sets and skill sets that you develop now that you will keep and carry with you throughout the rest of your life. I know for a fact we have, and someone else mentioned him in there. Yeah, I see Option God mentioned it. P&L man, he's retired. And uh, he's in our chat just about every show every day. He hasn't been recently because I know he's recovering from some pretty major surgery. And our thoughts and thoughts and well wishes are maybe a producer. We should send him a, a pro trading crate, kind of a get well soon pro trading crate. He's one of our longstanding members. He hasn't had a chance to get in the chat again. So hopefully he's doing well. But he's a good example of you're retired and never too late to pick up skills and pick up some knowledge and hone the things that you know. So I, I hopefully... A lot of me, I know we have more than one retiree floating around in the chat right now as well. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think these are skill sets you can develop and knowledge bases you can develop that will stay with you throughout your life. And certainly when you have more time on your hands, when you're retired, when you're not out there doing your day job, whatever that might be, 
Uh, you'll have some time to maybe get a little bit more into the weeds on some of this stuff we talk about on the show all the time, like capturing that Contango and VIX using products like UVIX or UVXY or all that kind of fun, VXX. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of nuance out there, and you have to be, you have to babysit those. And you know what? When you're retired, you have that time, so that's a great thing out there. Also, we have a question for you, uh, Mr. Mr. Dr. Vix. Uh, we have a question here. They says, uh, says Dr. Vix said he sold the S Vix call today. Are those the May, March eighth forty calls? You said you sold the underlying, not the calls, right? I sold the underlying. Yeah, I just got out of my S Vix position. Yeah, so he did not sell the yeah. calls. So that just wanted to clarify that for our listeners. Uh, he did not sell the calls. He just sold the underlying, which again, read into that what you will. He said he's traveling, which makes certain sense. Uh, also, probably if you're concerned about it not being there, but when you get back from your from your trip, that could certainly be uh, be a consideration as well. Uh, speaking of things that are considerations, uh, we asked you folks this will uh, last week really quickly will pay off because this involves VIX as well. Uh, we asked you at the time last week, beginning of the week, Tesla and Apple were both trading at exactly the same level, one hundred eighty eight dollars. We both know how that's working out right now. Not so great for Apple, not decently for Tesla. Uh, but we said, hey, which one gun to your head would you rather buy, Apple or Tesla? Or because it's us, we got to throw in a few fun choices. So we said, I'll stick with crypto or I'll stick with VIX slash volatility. That could be any of, any of the above. Trading these ETPs, trading the contango erosion, just buying VIX itself, whatever you like. Uh, and Apple took it 38.5%. Obviously not the winner right now, but give it some time. Maybe that'll change. Tesla number two, 29.5%. I'll stick with VIX or vol, 20.5%. And then bringing up the rear, which is interesting given the levels we're hitting now. I'll stick with crypto, 11.5%. Maybe some of you might want to change that in favor of crypto. Yeah, Mr. Rhodes has this run. I know you famously bailed on ETH back around 2,500, back around 3,000 now. Has that caused you maybe to uh, take a second look, maybe a second nibble in the world of crypto, or are you just out? I'm just out. I, You know, I, you know that the stint that I had at the Options Institute – um, you know, one of the things that, that I would try to get across to beginners was, you know, narrow your focus, trade what you know. Uh, you know, I, if, if you're, you know, if, if your interest is stock options and you live in, I'll just use Memphis because I know Memphis, uh, you know, you're going to want to trade Federal Express options because you're just more familiar with that company than some other people. I, you know, I'm familiar with index markets. I'm familiar with the volatility markets and I'm just going to stick with what I know. How's that? Can't argue with it. You had a good level for a yeah. long time. It wasn't above 2,500 for a while. I smart for a while. So, yeah, you had, yeah. You, had a, you had a feather in your cap for quite some time out there. Yeah. Uh, intriguing stuff. Fast forward to this week. We asked you kind of the question that was on everybody's brain. And everyone is laser focused on NVIDIA earnings this week. Uh, but how important is this really to the market and to your portfolio at the end of the day? We said, hey, very NVIDIA leads the market as much as other earnings or not much is overhyped. I think we all saw the answer play out in the market, but nonetheless, we like to ask you folks. And 62.3% of you right now saying, very important, NVIDIA leads the market. Kind of hard to dispute that one. And then uh, almost a tie for number two between not much, it's overhyped at 19.7%, and then bringing up the rear 18%, but still very close, as much as other earnings. So uh, intriguing stuff out there, but now is the time. We Time we've all waited for and or dreaded. It is time. For the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody. Welcome to the crystal ball. Let's see how we're looking. Oh, my goodness. Vix 1385. I'm at a 1385. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner for me. Woohoo. Sorry. Sorry, uh, <laughs> options queen. I like how you, uh, you chose to declare victory early. Very smart of you because we did get a little bit of erosion. You know what? I, I can't take too much of a seller. I will, but I can't take too much of a seller because I said last week on the show, I wanted to be a little bit higher, but our guest, Rich Excel, chose the 14 and a quarter level, so I moved down to accommodate him. But you know what? It worked. So at the end of the day, I'm taking my laurels where I can. <laughs> Winner, winner, chicken dinner for me. Uh, Rich Excel was pretty close, 14 and a quarter. And uh, the Rock Lobster was on, so he doesn't have to do Mark's palindromic nonsense. He was feeling his oats to the downside, 1299. He thought the vol was really going to come out aggressively post NVIDIA. Uh, didn't quite get there. That means I am the winner, so I get to choose where I will go. 
And you know what? I'll set the tone this week. I will go first this week just to have a little bit of fun. I'll give everyone else a few more minutes to mull over their prognostication. At about a 1385 coming into the end of the show. And you know what? I got some ball downside on, so I don't want that to skew me, pun intended. But I do think we might have a little bit more downside to go. That said, we, we have seen Vol kind of set a floor around the low 13, high 12 handle range recently. So I don't think we're talking a Vol annihilation. I'm going to say this time next week, oh, I'm bouncing around a few levels. I'm going to say lower, but not much. 13 double is where I am saying for this time next week. All right. Next closest was our guest. That means Mr. Dr. Vix, you get to go next, sir. What are you feeling for this time next week? 1550. Wow. I think I think we're overdue for a little bit higher ball. And that's not outside of the range this week. No, we were there. No, it's not high, but it's, you know, so it's not that that incredible. No, I, I really feel like I'm going to uh, if, if if Mark S goes below me, that I'll just win by not going over. But I think I'm going back to be an old school once and once and forever. I, and I was just going to say Vicks that's at like some you, point. <laughs> and going for the upside. That's just like right. the old school Dr. Vix on this show when you used to just buy all the upside all the time. I don't hate that. I don't hate if that came to pass. I would like if they filled me on my uh, UVix first to the downside, and maybe I get out of my Vix puts first. Then all that could happen. How's that sound? Let's do all that, that first. That sounds wonderful. And then you could have your prediction. Uh, so a little bit. Then we both win. Everybody wins. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mr. Meatball, you get to bring up the rear this week. What palindromic nonsense is setting your world on fire? Well, you know, I'm I'm with Russell. He said 1550. He did. All right, then I'm going to feel pretty comfortable going 1441. <laughs> well, you yeah. you wanted to go 1551, didn't you? <laughs> I was thinking about 1551. That would have been we'll, we'll go with 1441. <laughs> that would have been the mother of all jerk moves if you did that. It would have been kind of funny. All right, 144. We got quite the quite the range here today. 13 double for me, aka the right prediction listeners. Uh 1441. And then 15 and a half. Our producers will go through. I know, Queen, you were close. Uh, they will go through if there were any others who were close from last week. Uh, and if you were within our tenth of a point margin of victory, then fantastic prizes shall be yours. Remember, if you listen after the fact, you can get your prognostication. And you don't have to listen live. You can send it in. Uh, questions at theoptionsinsider.com or via our, our you know, social media will get to us as well. Just make sure you do it the day the podcast comes out. Otherwise, it's not fair to everybody else. You're getting a, a leg up on them. But to get your predictions in, and you too can win fabulous prizes. Man, what fabulous prize do I win for all these crystal balls I get, man? Nope, no prize for me. Unfortunately, listener, that is going to do it for us on Volatility Views this week. If you don't want your broadcast week to end, you want to come back, talk a little bit more, Vix. We always start the show with that, with the Rock Lobster, as well as, of course, a whole bunch of funky trades as well as all kinds of other good stuff. Am I going to get out of my Ubix in time? Let's turn that tune in to find out. <laughs> Coming up a little bit later on Options Oddities, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. And speaking of places to go, Mr. Rhodes, oh, the places you'll go and the things you'll see since we talk to you, or I should say between now and when we talk to you next. Uh, you're heading to that Urex show. We got some other stuff cooking. What's on your docket, sir? Yeah, I'm going to um, an asset management conference, an academic conference at Cambridge, and I'm what's referred to as a discussion around a paper. And the paper, it's, uh, you know, we, we've known that buying stocks uh, that, that have good momentum has been a, a nice way to trade for a very long time, and it's been academically proven to work as well. Um, I am reviewing a paper that basically takes a look at option momentum, but also looks at momentum within the volatility. And they've actually come up with a way to, uh, on a consistent basis, pick stocks with options that are that you're going to see in the realized volatility outperform the implied volatility over one month periods. Mm. There's like 170 oh. factors in the model. But oh, wow. I think and, and part of what I'm going to say is I think practitioners are going to lose their minds when you get this published. 170 factors. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of yeah. moving parts, sir. It is that's a lot of factors. Lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I am curious to see uh, the response to that as maybe once you're done with it, send it our way. I'll take a look at it and uh, we'll see what we can do. In the meantime, sir, if folks want to give you a follow on the various social medias. Where should they go? What should they do? Um, my, um, my Twitter is the best place and it's just my first name, Russell Rhodes, uh, two L's, two S's, R-H-O-A-D-S. 
There you go. Give him a follow. Russell, two L's, R-H-O-A-D-S. All one word on the old Twitter. Oh, they just filled me. Hallelujah. Man, they were... They were stringing me along, talking about that lack of liquidity. That's where it comes back to bite you. Mr. Meatball, sir, what's catching your eye? I should say, what, what should folks check out over there well, in the wait, land of what, the pit? What did, you, what did you just buy? I wasn't buying. I was selling. I was closing some uh, UVIX puts, but they were they were making me work for it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm still sitting on some uh, March UVIX puts that I got to decide. I, I, I gave myself like a 100% challenge on them. It was the March... Uh, 16 puts. I bought them for like three something. They're six bucks. And like, I want to sell them, but I promised I would get 100% on them. So I'm being stubborn. <laughs> I was stubborn yesterday. Uh, I tried to get 7x. I ended up settling for 5x, but I only have two hours left. So I couldn't mess around anymore. A smart move. Uh, yeah. Follow me on Twitter at Option Pit. You'll be happy. You will be a happy camper at Option Pit is the place to go. We got to get on out of here. If you're listening on the podcast, that will conclude your broadcast week with us. Thank you for joining us throughout the newly christened NVIDIA week. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. If you missed anything, it's all available there on the podcast feed for you. Of course, if you head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, you can join us back again a little bit after this show for all sorts of options oddities fun. I can break down my fill I just got. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Finally, working that for a while. Again, the perils of less liquidity out there. Then, of course, we're back again on Monday for the old OB. No holiday next week. All the way through to next Friday, another episode. Volatility views. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.